Hi folks, I'm just going to be here for a second. I'm going to introduce my wife. She's the boss of the gang. <laughs> I do all the research. She's the boss of the gang. Here you go, Cindy. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, folks. I've had the pleasure of speaking to most of you, which is awesome. I'm going to do a, a short PowerPoint uh, presentation today, maybe hit a few things that I never got to speak to you personally about, and uh, we'll go from there. If you have any questions, um, I'd be more than happy to address them at the end. And I also, if you haven't received any information, we do have uh, little packets at the back at our booth afterwards that will um, have information that will be pertinent to what I'm speaking about now. The acid-alkaline balance gets to the root of the problem. Not only when you become alkaline do you create an environment that's not hospitable to cancer, but many other sicknesses and, and diseases as well. So the, balance, the balancing act is your blood keeping the acid and alkaline balanced so that the acid does not get in your bloodstream. Okay, these are your wonderful blood cells. One of the issues that people have when they are acidic is acid reflux or, or GERDs. Uh, arthritis is another one. Your, your body uh, creates uh, acid in the joints. When you become alkaline, you can get rid of arthritis. All types of arthritis, by the way. We've had great success with that. Cancer is another one. Again, it, the environment's not right. The cancer can't grow there. Diabetes. Your, your pancreas is an alkaline-producing organ. So if you have diabetes, that's a sign that you've been very acidic and your body has been trying to create alkaline to deal with that issue. Excess weight gain. Gout. Amazing results that we get as we get people alkaline. They can get rid of their gout. Heart disease. Osteo. And all your degenerative diseases because you're down in the acidic level if you have degenerative diseases. When you stay alkaline, your body is rejuvenating and healing itself and creating new healthy, wonderful cells. Acidosis. Your body takes the acid, stores it in places, deals with it in different um, situations. As in this one, it talks about eating and drinking and that's, that's the issue is the eating and the drinking because you create acid or alkaline by what goes in your mouth. So your leafy greens are your mineral rich foods. Most of our other processed and packaged foods is acid forming. Our meats are acid forming, our dairies, our grains, and it doesn't sound like there's much left. <laughs> but realistically, when, when we focus on getting quality minerals in us, quality plant minerals, our body can deal with that, that acid that's formed by the other food. So what is the pH? It actually means potential of hydrogen. It measures the condition of our critical body fluids being the saliva, the urine, and the blood. Now on this chart you can see alkaline is up 7.4, 7.6, and 8. That's where we want our bodies to be. Down in the acidic level, if we're down at 6.4, though it's only one full point, it's 10 times acid. And if we're down at 5.5 and beyond, our body is at least 20 times acid. That whole yellow and green area at the far side is where degenerative disease happens. We're, that's when we are septic. We, so we've created the environment for sickness and disease, including cancer, to grow. When you stay alkaline, you cannot have those diseases. Your body will correct itself. Your body is designed to correct itself and heal itself when at a cellular level we give the body the nutrition that it needs to function properly. So in, in this the package that I mentioned, we're going to have test strips uh, and a chart so that you can pee on the little strip, it'll change color, and you can see your own acid alkaline level. So if you haven't already got this information from us, come to the back later on and we'll get you a pack and, and you can check your own acid alkaline level. There's the three ways to monitor your pH. There's the saliva, the urine, and the blood. The saliva changes depending on what you've last eaten. So it's the least reliable. Your urine, it's the state of your body and the blood. If it changes more than a hair, it's too late. Um, unfortunately, I have to my, my husband's brother. He's a diabetic, and um, he literally ate himself to death, but it said nothing about diabetes on his death certificate. It said that he died of septicemia. Again, septic tank acid. He was decomposing from the inside out, and the organs just all just started shutting down one after another. The ideal pH for your body is 7.4, but it, that's actually the base. If, if you already have a health issue, you need to stay to the 7.6, the 8, 
for a period of time to kind of give your body that extra boost. But 7.4 would be your maintenance level is where you'd want to be. It comes down to you are what you eat, whatever you put in your mouth. As Hippocrates says, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. Now, this was a novel concept to me when I was growing up, that food is fuel. Because I was raised that it was comfort food and it was reward food and it was just because you were hungry, but it's really fuel. And so it's important what we put in our mouth to actually fuel the cells. I give the example often, men can generally relate to this, that you don't put diesel in a gas engine and you don't put gas in a diesel engine. Not that there's anything wrong with the fuel, it's just the vehicle you're putting it in is not designed for that fuel. So we're designed for a particular kind of fuel and um, it's not packaged in processed food. The most fundamental cause of disease, i.e. the accumulation of excess acid in the body, occurs when the body's intake and production of acid residue exceeds its ability to adequately eliminate it. This occurs primarily as a result of unwise food choices, improper food combining, and consumption of chemical food additives and drugs. Diet totally controls our acid alkaline level. Every time you put something into your mouth, you're either making an acid or an alkaline choice. And I just want to point out that it's not how the food is on your tongue, it's how it metabolizes. So you would think like a lemon or an orange, a grapefruit would be very acidic and you wouldn't want to eat that. That's exactly the opposite. Um, acid on the tongue, citric acid on the tongue from those actually metabolizes as alkaline. So a fresh squeeze of lemon in some water is one of the best things you can do to help alkalize your body. Whereas on the other hand, something like oatmeal and blueberries that we think of as being very good healthy foods, both of them are very acid forming. They both have wonderful health benefits in many other ways, but they are acid forming. So if you're trying to get your body up to an alkaline level, it's something that you may want to put on the back burner for a period of time. And when you get your pH levels up, subscribe to the 80-20 rule. You know, 80% try to do alkaline and have your 20% acid forming foods. It does never have to be 100% unless you're in that range where you're trying to heal a particular illness right now. Most of your raw fruits and veggies are going to be alkalizing. As far as fruits go, only blueberries, cranberries, and plums are acid forming. So that, but everything else in that range, you would be safe. This acidifying food list, as you look, is probably the majority of what the majority of us eat. Whether it's animal protein, dairy, grains, fats, oils, alcohol, uh, artificial sweeteners, those kinds of things. It basically comes down to fresh fruits and veggies. That's what's going to keep you alkaline. So if most of us in North America are going to eat of the grains and the meats and the fish and the eggs and the cheese and some dairy, then we have to, on purpose, make sure we're getting mineral-rich plant food in our diet. Have anybody heard of the SAD diet, the standard American diet? That's basically what we, we partake in. It's packaged, microwaved, cooked to death, chemical-laden, nutrient-void, fat- and calorie-laden foods. What our body needs is minerals, quality minerals, not minerals that were manufactured in a laboratory, plant minerals. The body knows what to do with that. So your body wants to get rid of the acid, but it needs the, the minerals. That's how osteo occurs, is because your body's been stealing the calcium from the bones to try and deal with the excess acid in the body. Okay, yes. Most of your leafy greens are rich in minerals if it's been grown in mineral-rich soil. If the soil doesn't have it, the plant can't have it either. So if, if you're using wonderful organic kale and chard or spinach or you're growing your own and you know the soil's loaded with minerals, then it will be in that plant. But if you got your kale and spinach and chard from a factory farm where they're putting chemicals back on to try and grow the plant, even though you're eating the chard and the kale and the spinach, you're not getting what you need. Alfalfa is the best one that we personally have found. We grow it on our certified organic farm. What makes alfa, alfalfa totally unique is that the roots go to 100 feet deep. And there it's tapping virgin nutrition. So it's getting to nutrition that other plants can't even begin to touch. And that's what makes all the difference. So alfalfa sprouts don't qualify because they're only little tiny plants and they haven't had an opportunity to tap the nutrition in the earth. And ultimately that's where we get all of our real nutrition is from the earth. From the sun, the earth, the water that's passed through the earth and gathered the minerals. I'm sure you've heard of mineral rich water like Kangen water and things like that. It's all because of the minerals that raises the alkalinity.
So to put it into perspective, in order to neutralize one glass of cola with a pH of 2.5, you would need 32 glasses of alkaline water with a pH of 10 just to neutralize it. So the next time you go and have a cola, just think about what you would need just to neutralize one cola. That's not even the rest of the food that you've had throughout the day. That's one cola. It's, it's horrendous. And that's not making you alkaline. That's just to neutralize it. Now, this is just a, a brief list, actually, of what's going to happen in your body if you're storing acid. It can show up as allergies, arthritis, cancer, candida, colitis, degenerative disease, depression, diabetes, digestive problems, enzyme deficiency, excess weight, fatigue, <laughs> fungus, gout, heartburn, heart issues, high cholesterol, hormone imbalance, hypertension, insomnia, joint pain, kidney malfunction, liver problems, migraines, mineral malabsorption, muscle pain, obesity, osteoporosis, stone stress, tiredness, ulcers, vitamin malabsorption, and yeast infection. That's a short list. Because when, when the cells of your body aren't functioning correctly, you're going to manifest a myriad of aches, pains, diseases, mental fog, um, not being able to think clearly, aches and pains, just you can't explain some things, you just don't feel good. And when you get alkaline, all these different little and big issues start to resolve themselves. The body's amazing, it's absolutely amazing when you give it what it needs. An acidic body creates an environment which is conducive to sickness and disease, so that's what we're trying to counteract. When the body's out of balance, as I've mentioned before, we decompose. We need to stop that. We can totally stop that with our diet. Just like certain plants, like a blueberry plant or a cranberry plant, require an acid soil to grow, so does cancer. So if we make it that the environment is alkaline, the cancer can't grow. It can't thrive. It's the wrong environment. If you have a hot tub or a pool or a fish tank, you have to check the pH. In a pool and a hot tub, you're trying to make it acidic so there's no, no those green fuzzy things aren't growing in there. When you have a fish tank, you want it to be more alkaline because you want the fish to thrive. So we have alkalinity that we need to look after in our body. Even, I spoke to Bill Van Der Zandt one time, and everybody knows the expert gardener, and he said to me, he says, I always figured it made a difference in our bodies because he says it makes such a huge difference to plants. So an alkaline body is an environment for health. I say health, wealth, and wisdom. Rejuvenation and repair of cells. Yes, energy, that's a huge one, a huge one. Healthy weight, vitality. Now an acidic body, this poor little kid, it's conducive to sickness and disease, and it just goes on and on, whether it's cancer, arthritis, obesity, depression, mental fog, diabetes, low or no libido. It just goes on and on and on. So a healthy alkaline body will heal itself. You just have to give it the plant minerals it needs. Okay? And that's, that's what we're here to encourage people to do. It's, you don't have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. It's not some impossible thing to grasp. It's very much within your reach. It's just getting the education as to what's alkaline, what's acidic, and where you're going to find that balance. Whether you need to supplement something like our pH Happy Caps, which is a mineral a boost, it'll bring your alkalinity up quickly, or you just need something like the alfalfa that's mineral rich and is a natural um, multivitamin mineral, uh, natural detox, or whether you just want to do it just yourself, growing your own veggies in your garden and making sure you've got mineral rich soil. Just to know that that balance is something that you need to address. Live a healthy, pain-free, and drug-free. That's one of my passions, pain-free and drug-free. It doesn't have to be difficult. It does not have to be expensive. It can be done with quality food. That's all you need. And a little awareness as to what is alkaline and acid, and then you can make your own choices from there. Your mental choice and decision is the gatekeeper, so you're totally in control. Your mouth is the doorway to health, wealth, and wisdom. Or it's the exact opposite. You totally have control. It's not a mystery. So we are Suede Hills, certified organic farm. We're up 45 minutes west of Kamloops. We grow all the products that, that we sell, and we're more than happy to work one-on-one -on -one with people, educating you and, and helping you to find the balance that works for you that will keep you healthy. We have workshops at the farm. We sit one-on-one -on -one and do nutritional life coaching. The goal is to get people well and so that hopefully it will get passed on to other generations. So thank you so much for your time and attention.